Hi, everybody. It's your girl, Epiphany Tanya. I'm back. I'm here. And it's yet another video. So what do you think you're supposed to do? Well, we know what we need to do. Hit that subscribe. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Like, comment, share. Subscribe, share this video. All right, let's get into it. So today, I have a special topic for you. But before we get started, so we already talked about we're going to subscribe, subscribe, make sure you subscribe. And, um, and I also want you to check down in the description section where I have links to all my various businesses. Remember, I started off as an entrepreneur for Trump. That was my first video I did on Be Like Water Media. Shout out to them, by the way. Thanks, Be Like Water Media. Appreciate you. The, those guys, that guy, actually the person who runs that channel, he gave me an opportunity. He put it out there for the community to share their thoughts and their videos and their vote and their politics and all these great things. And even I had a chance to share my faith on that channel. So. I'm really appreciative of them. So I just want to say shout out to them. Um, so check down in the descriptions. Again, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a lot of different business ventures. Let me see. Let me see if I can run down this list real quick and not bore you too much. <laughs> but okay, so my business, I do uh, books. I do books. I help others ghost write their book. Let's say if you don't like to write, you don't think you can write, I actually write books for people. Um, we transcribe, we take your audio recordings and we transcribe them into your book within three months, 90 days, 90 day book. Coaching, I coach people, writing coach, I coach them into writing their own book. I coach people through various life difficulties, helping you get over the hurdle and the hump, helping you improve your life, helping you reach your goals, that's what I do, Epiphany Tanya. I do coaching, consulting. I also have a graphic design business. I design graphics, resumes, invitations, flyers, t-shirts. Uh, we can do custom design t-shirts for your business, your event, your ministry, whatever it is. Uh, what else? <laughs> I have t-shirts on Teespring. You can go, like I said, down in the descriptions. Make sure you subscribe first. Down in the description, we have t-shirts, the Red Republic, we have the American design, the servicemen, the, uh, <laughs> we have Black Lives MAGA t-shirts. We have Entrepreneur's MAGA t-shirts. So I'm gonna have my MAGA gear on, hopefully in a video very, very soon, because I just ordered my stuff today. So you guys have to understand that my journey has been a long road, long time coming. And um, just recently only fully came into the understanding politically um, where I am today. So, you know, I have a way still to go with, you know, making sure I have my MAGA hat and all my gear. I can't wait. I'm so excited about it. So you'll see me in the red. Please don't judge me. I'm not for the Democrats, even though I have on blue today. So blue actually means devotion. So anyway. Um, well, I can stand with the thin blue line. I can stand with the um, blue lives matter. Okay, so that's what I'm doing today. We're standing with the blue. Um, we're back in the blue, supporting the blue. Okay, cool. So um, let me see, what else did I wanna talk to you guys about today? So title of the video, we're gonna get into that very, very soon. I wanna make sure I'm covering everything else. I have books on Amazon under Latanya's Epiphany. I have courses on Udemy under Latanya's Epiphany. Make sure you guys go check it out. You got free previews there of the books. You got free previews of the courses. You can see me in action, what I do. I teach, I teach writing, creative writing, marketing, um, book publishing. I have all different types of courses. I'm a counselor by nature and heart. That's my background. Um, so I, had, I did a successful career there, eight years of counseling families, children, um, all settings of mental health. So I was able to transfer those skills over into the coaching side. And now I love to coach people. I love to coach people through whatever barriers, obstacles, help you get over the hurdle and the hump. And um, let me see, what else? I don't know, I feel like I'm forgetting something because there's so much, there's so much going on. Okay, cool. Now let's get into it. What is this video about? We're talking today about the rise of this S. 
SJWs. SJWs, you're like, what is a SJW? Well, a SJW is a social justice warrior. Dun, dun, dun. So <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm still, <laughs> I have to sit up there and get some theme music behind me. Dun, dun, dun. That's when that would drop right there. Social justice warrior. So we're talking about the rise of the social justice warrior. So um, I've done a few videos now on different things. We've talked about Black Lives Matter on video. We talked about um, President Trump and all the different reasons why you should, you should support him. Um, I still stand by those videos. I'm going to do so many more videos, especially about um, this, this coming election. We're going to talk more about you know why you should support Donald Trump and the Trump administration and why they're great and why they're making America great again. But anyway, um, I digress. So <laughs> we're going to talk about the social justice warrior today, because if you haven't, haven't noticed, I don't know where you have been. Maybe you've been under a rock somewhere. Maybe, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know where you've been, why you don't know about these social justice warriors that are rising up. Social justice warrior, SJWs. Um, and why? Why are these social justice? Why are, you know, even in other countries now, you're seeing all these videos of these marches and they're protesting and all this stuff, right? There has been an explosion, right? All this time we keep talking about white supremacy, but you don't see white supremacy. I mean, Charlottesville was one, um, one indication, right? But you don't really see, and all of those weren't white supremacists, by the way, let's get this straight. Some of them were nationalists, right? And that has nothing to do with color. When I looked in that crowd, I saw different races of quote unquote nas white nationalists. I saw black men in there that were a part of that uh, march that were trying to stand against people tearing down the statue. So anyway, so maybe it was something to this fine people on both sides comment. I don't know. Anyway, do your research. Okay, so <laughs> social justice warriors. Why are they so prevalent? What is it all about? Where is this coming from? Um, okay, so we're going to talk about it. So I want to first talk about the fact that this whole push, um, especially with the Marxi Marxism, um, with the Marxist movement, you know, because that's where it's all stemming from. And you have to understand, see, I went to liberal schools. Um, I went to, I have my bachelor's in psychology from Temple University in Philadelphia, PA. Shout out to Philly. Um, that's where I was born and raised, Philadelphia, PA. Um, I feel like I'm about to do, break into that Fresh Prince song. Uh, what is it? West Philadelphia, born and raised. See, I can't really say that because I really grew up in North Philadelphia, not West. You got West, you got North, you got South, you got um, Northeast, you got all these different parts of Philadelphia. But so I can't really say, well, I can say North Philadelphia, born and raised on the playgrounds where I spent most of my days. Okay, anyway, sorry I had to <laughs> take that little detour. Let's stick to the topic, stay on topic. <laughs> okay, social justice warriors. So I went to these liberal universities, Temple University, um, University of Penn, that's where I got my master's in school of mental health counseling. That was a highly doctrinated liberal school, okay? So I don't know, you know, um, even though Donald Trump went there too, I didn't even realize that, that we shared the same alma mater. But anyway, I mean, it's another reason why I like him. But anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know where they are politically, you know, as a whole, but I know from my program that I was in that we had liberal professors. And I think just the field that I went into, counseling, you know, similar to social work, is a very liberal discipline or liberal, you know, more on the democratic, liberal, social justice side. So I got my taste and my fair share. <clears throat> One of the, the issues that I take with this whole movement is like how they're bringing in this indoctrination into the school systems. So I just want to, if you have children, you know, in the American uh, school system, and I don't know how this is in other countries. Maybe you guys that are from other places can drop down in the comments and tell me about um, your experience with you know them pushing this Marxist socialism agenda through the school system. So that's one place where they start to indoctrinate you. I would really encourage you guys to go look up um, critical race theory. So that's another uh, really negative movement of you know the things they're teaching in that you know where you can see the underpinnings. Um, all throughout this BLM and this Antifa and all these places, I mean, between Marxism and the um, and the critical race theory or the critical theory of which the people that created that theory were Marxists. So this, ideolo this um, ideology that they're pushing into our children, into our school systems, now you see it coming out in 
the world, in politics, in the streets, um, on the news. You see it everywhere now, and it's this big push for it. It started, though, little seeds in the school system in our children. I remember myself. I remember being taught all these things. I remember learning about Marxism and how it was, oh, it's it so good, you know, and it was this big push as opposed to capitalism is bad and evil and not really understanding, not having both sides of the story or the coin. So wanting to lean on that side of, oh yeah, socialism good, capitalism bad. The capitalists are, they're so selfish. They just want all the money to themselves. They don't care about poor people. They don't care about um, those that are down and out. And, you know, um, for some reason, I don't know why we were led to believe and we, we fell for it hook, line and sinker that we're supposed to have other people's money and that everybody else is supposed to take care of us and that we shouldn't necessarily have to work for ourselves, but we should always be looking for a handout from the government or somebody else. And we all fell for it. You know, I know if you guys know from other videos, I talked about my upbringing that my mother, you know, not proud to say that she was on welfare and um, this was something that we grew up on and she was always looking for a government program so to me it not necessarily that it was normal I knew that my life growing up wasn't normal me and my sisters always kind of joked and laughed and talked about that like okay this is not normal lifestyle that how we lived but at the same time when something is just repeated in your life or something's just constantly there and it's, it, it becomes a part of your life and you, in a sense it's some normalcy to it so you think yes the government's supposed to help people um, I remember going through problems and going to the church and the church sending me to the government and they say oh no it goes to the government so that's not that's kind of backwards in the bible um, we see in Acts where, you know, it says they had all things common and they helped each other. So, you know, it, it doesn't even make sense. Like even the church has been indoctrinated to think that the government is supposed to take care of us anyway. Or, you know, where is this um, self-empowerment to learn how to stand on your own two feet? You know, what is that uh, Chinese proverb or Asian proverb of if you um, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. You know, where is this? Um, push to teach people how to fish. You know, it's all this, um, we should take care of the world and we should take care of everybody else. But I don't really see a big push on teaching us how to take care of ourselves, how to how to um, be entrepreneurs, how to invest, how to um, go into trades and stocks and, and how to make money work for you and how to be financially um, responsible and, and fiscal and all these things, right? So we don't see about that. But I want to talk to you about this uh, social justice um, I want to give you some more deeper revelations about it. And the funny thing that I got um, while, you know, thinking about this topic that I wanted to talk to you guys about today, what I got out of it, um, I was able to take from my training as a counselor. You know, so in counseling, we have these different models and theories. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a educational lesson today. So we have these different theories and models. One model that um, I saw implemented back when I was in Philly, there's a few agencies that um, that have this model as their agency model. And also then when I came, um, when I moved to Florida, where I currently reside, I, I saw it uh, implemented down here as well. So this is a model that I guess is spread. Now maybe this model could even be liberal. It could be, um, I don't know, I have to really look more into this model to try to figure out like which side of the spectrum would it fall on? Would it be democratic, liberal, um, left wing? Would it be right wing? Where does it fall? But in some ways I almost wanna think it's more on the right wing side because, well, you'll see once I get into explaining to you what, what I, wh why I'm using this as a, a, a good model to help you understand the rise of the social justice warrior, right? And why this is so prevalent. Um, so in this model called Sanctuary, right? Sanctuary is this model. Um, it was created by this doctor. Her name is uh, nu, nu, Nurava. I believe it's Nurava. I have to um, look up her name again. But this woman who created Sanctuary, um, she did so thinking about people with trauma and people with substance abuse issues. Um, because a lot of times people who suffer from substance abuse also suffer from some type of trauma. And a lot of times that's what leads you into the substance use because you had some trauma in your lifetime, in your history, or um, you know you got into substance abuse and that created trauma because maybe some of the behaviors that became risky behaviors that you participated in increased your trauma um, level do during that time, right? 
So um, one of the things about sanctuary, they have all these different principles that uh, the model stands on or, you know, that you want to implement in your organization. It's more organizational wide model that's used, um, but you can also use it in just everyday life. You can use it in um, your, you know, as a therapist with your clients, you can use it in different places. So one principle that I want to take out of sanctuary that helps me understand the social justice warrior is something called the triangle, right? So in sanctuary, they have this, this triad or this triangle. And um, it just stands, it just represents these three different people that you'll find in any conflict situation, right? So right now we have a big conflict in our country. We have a conflict between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. We have a conflict between the left wing, um, left wing radicals and the um, alt-right, I guess you can say, could be the conflict. You have these two groups and then you have the moderates in the middle of each party, right? So in sanctuary though, these three groups, let me tell you about them. So there is the victim, right? So in any conflict, I want you to always try to look for these three group, these three different actors. There you go, that's a good word, actors. You have the victim, you have the villain, and you have the rescuer, right? Victim, villain, rescuer, remember those three. So I was thinking about this last night and it just became so abundantly clear to me what why these social justice warriors are so prevalent right now. So for myself, I didn't realize, <laughs> don't judge me, but I'm realizing I was a social justice warrior, right? This is the reason why you go into counseling, you go into social work, because you wanna help people. You want to save the world, right? <laughs> they call us the bleeding heart liberals, right? So um, I also, you know, besides counseling therapy, I used to work for a health insurance company. Now this health insurance company had both medical um, professionals as well as social workers. So we had, which is usually the medical profession adheres to both disciplines. They adhere to the social work model or, and the medical model, right? So you're gonna have your nurses and your doctors, and you're gonna have your social workers working right alongside the nurses and the doctors. And in counseling, social workers and counselors or therapists, they're so similar. It's almost like this debate now between the MDs versus the DOs, right? So they try to put down um, Trump's doctor because he has the DO behind his name. Um, and then a lot of the MDs stepped up and spoke up on Twitter against that, saying that we're like one in the same, we have all the same training and it's very similar. So that's kind of like social work. Social work has a little bit of a different philosophy than the counselor therapist, but they're, they're so intertwined that a lot of times I've worked social work jobs because if you have the training and the discipline of a counselor therapist, um, we both share the foundation of psychology for one, and you'll have different aspects of social work in counseling therapy and vice versa. So anyway, long story short. So um, in this, let's go back to the sanctuary mind. So in sanctuary, you have the victim, villain, and the rescuer, right? So um, in any conflict, you wanna look for these three people and try to figure out which role you're in. Because nine times out of 10, if it's three people, you're gonna fall in, or three groups, you're gonna fall in one of those roles. So, um, I remember working at this job and I was a counselor for, in a homeless shelter. And so that this was a job that they adhered to the sanctuary model. And I had a intern that was um, under me. I, you know, we were supervi we were supervisor of interns as well. And so we had, we had a certain, each of the counselors had a certain number of interns that reported to them, that trained under them. And so I had this one intern and she had issues with, you know, we had different departments. So another department was intake. And so some of the interns will go between intake and they will also do counseling. So they would have like both um, a supervisor on both sides. So an intake side, the girl who was over, the lady that was over the intake, um, a lot of the interns were always triggered by her, right? So at the time I didn't realize they were snowflakes, but anyway, so <laughs> they were always being triggered by this lady because I think she was just very stern and firm and she wanted just them to do their job, but they, you know, 
no offense millennials, but uh, <laughs> I think a lot of them, you know, they were in that millennial crowd and they just didn't feel like somebody should come down on them or be harsh on them or tell them, you know, what to do, you know, even though that's the woman's job to make sure that you do your job. But anywho, I digress. So I had this internet came to me and, you know, she would report to me and we would have our, um, our one-on-ones and she was complaining about the supervisor and the intake. Well, thank goodness I had this training about uh, sanctuary and the, the triangle and understanding that, okay, at that moment she was playing the victim. She was the victim in that situation that this horrible, mean supervisor was coming down on her and um, she was so mean to her in the way she talked to people and she was abusing all the interns with her verbal abuse and all this stuff, right? And so I was I was triggered because, you know, my mama bear instincts wanted to kick in. And I was like, well, wait a minute, this is my intern. How, who is she to talk bad to my intern? And, you know, I don't know about this. I might have to have some words with her. And I wanted to jump in and I wanted to rescue this intern. And when I saw it through the lens of the sanctuary model, that I understood that she was playing the victim. She had made the supervisor into the villain and I was trying to step in my, my instincts to want to be the rescuer, wanted to jump in. And when I saw that, I realized, okay, I started talking to her about how she could handle that situation. And she, you know, maybe she would speak up, maybe she would voice her feelings towards the woman, maybe she would try to sit down and have a talk, maybe she would try to find ways to work it out and see it from her other side. I started, once I realized it and I, I wasn't trying to rescue her and jump in and save the day, then I began to work with her on how she could fight her own battles because she pretty much, it wasn't gonna help her for me to jump in and rescue her. I, she had to learn how to stand up for herself and take responsibility for herself and take ownership for herself. And you know, if she wasn't doing something right in this woman's department, who was I to come in and swoop in and say, oh my goodness, which you see happening a lot in parenting. A lot of parents do that. Um, so anyway, so um, I began to work with her about that and I started to see how you know, we all can play this role in this triangle of either you're the victim, you're the villain, villain, or you're the rescuer. Well, as I began to continue to study this model, what I understood, you know, we think about how um, they all play off of each other, right? The victim needs a villain, right? That girl needed somebody to blame for her problem. She needed to say, oh, this supervisor was so bad and so horrible and oh, woe is me. She needed to play that victim role. That was the role that she assumed maybe it was comfortable for her. Maybe that's the role she played in her family. Sometimes people can have a role in their family and then when they get out into the real world, they play a different role because maybe they can't play that role in their family. Sometimes they just keep playing the same role that they play in their family. Sometimes they'll play a different role based on the situation because they just need to do something else. Who knows all the different aspects of what makes people change roles, but they all feed off of each other and they all need each other. So that victim needs a villain. They need to vilify somebody. That rescuer needs a victim to save. That villain, I mean, I really, I'm still trying to figure the villain out. You know, what does the villain get out of it? Maybe just, I don't know, they get to be the bad guy if you enjoy that type of thing. I don't know what the villain gets out of it. Um, and sometimes you'll see them switch because when somebody becomes the villain, when they're vilified by somebody else, then they'll, they may run to somebody else to be the victim of, oh my goodness, they're vilifying me, right? So it's always this rotation of these roles. So I saw it so clear for these social justice warriors. For one thing, what I noticed is being a counselor and being a therapist, you have this thing where you want to rescue people, right? It's, it's kind of like in your DNA. You want to help everybody. You want to save the world. And it's funny because, um, you know, you realize real fast, first of all, you're going to burn yourself out. Second of all, you can't save everybody. You can't save anybody. You barely can save yourself. You can be there as a guide. You can be there as a help. You can be there to help empower somebody. But you're not anybody's savior. So if you don't learn that early on in your counseling career, you're going to be in trouble. So anyway, I digress. But um, so these social justice warriors, you have to recognize the government. Okay, let's go talking about the government. The government does not make money. They don't make their own money, right? And it's something powerful about this Robin Hood type of effect where I'm going to take money from you to give it to them, right? And I begin to understand this working in these um, social services type agencies, right? I wasn't going to give anybody my money 
But when I had clients come in, and you know, depending on the agency I worked in, because I also, besides counseling, I've done career counseling. Um, I worked for career, I worked as a career counselor in a welfare to work program. I worked as I have, I have like a twenty year work history, so I've done all types of different jobs. You name it, I've done it. I worked in the I worked for the government before. I used to um, don't judge me. I used to work for as a um, tax examiner in the IRS. So anyway, um, I've done so many different jobs. I worked in childcare as a um, in the daycares. I've worked you know everything. I probably worked in fast food when I was young as a teenager. All that good stuff. But in these social service agencies, they would always give us resources, right? They would say, okay, this is the grant, the grant money, let's say that they got from the government. This is how much money we have for the fiscal year. This is um, how many resources, this is what we, we have to give out or give away. Let's take, for instance, when I worked in the um, welfare to work program, as a career counselor. Well, we had funding that helped people with childcare, right? So if they were looking for work or they were in a volunteer program because they were getting training, they were on the job training, had OJT, on the job training um, type jobs, and we had all types of different programs for them. Um, sometimes it would be an organization that they could go and they can volunteer and they could get hours because they had to report hours every week in order to keep their welfare check going until you know they had a certain number of years on a program. Now they cut it down to like five years. I don't know what it is now but at that time when I worked in it a few years ago it was five years so they had their time their clock was ticking so while their clock was ticking they had to always be reporting that they were either either volunteering they had an OJT or they were doing something that was setting them up to work they were in school they were doing something and they had to always like have pay, a paper sign, signed off by their professor or the um, organization director or um, the job supervisor, they always had to get their hours signed off on. Now, as long as they got their hours signed off on, then we could give them a voucher for childcare. We also have vouchers for things like clothing because maybe they need to go on job interviews. So they would go through a, um, what is it called? The, um, oh my goodness, the Dress to Success. There you go, the Dress to Success program. So we had vouchers for that. And um, we had, um, in the program that I worked at down here in Florida, they even had a program where you can get money to either get your car fixed or I don't even, I'm trying to remember if they had something where they could buy a car, like they put money down on a car for them. So they had so much stuff, so many resources, so much money, so much funding. And so it was up to us to be the ones to allot that, right? It wasn't our money in our pocket, but we would have the access to that sign off on something so that they could get the money, our clients could get the money, or they could get the voucher, or they could get, you know, here's your voucher to take to your daycare provider, and the daycare provider can cash that voucher in and get a check sent to them. So the power, I just have to like kind of let you guys in on the what it felt like to be that person that took that resource and was able to redirect it to another person that was in need. There's a power to that. It feels good. It feels like, oh, I did this. Even though it's not your money, it's like, oh, I feel good. I gave this money to this person. This is pretty much the government. This is pretty much how your people, Nancy Pelosi and all these people operate. They're taking your money. It's the taxpayer's money. They have no money of their own. So they collect your money and it's a, their job to try to then divvy it out to these various organizations, social services, all this stuff. They want to help all these people, Planned Parenthood. They want to help all these people because in their mind, this is what they deem is good. This is their ideology that let me give a whole bunch of money to Planned Parenthood because this is so wonderful to kill babies. Okay. So anyway, and I plead the blood of Jesus over that. We know that's not good. So... I just want to kind of let you in on the mindset of the government. It's not their money. It's your money, right? It's not their money. It's my money. It's our money. And they take it and then they redirect the funds to those they deem worthy or they think that they are in need. And it's a real power trip. It's a real power trip. So now going back to the sanctuary. So I figured out that, you know, these people, like whether it's nowadays, it's the black people, it's the African Americans, the you're so oppressed. Oh, let's save you, let's rescue you. At one point in time, it was the LGBTQ. They're still going strong, even even though now we're kind of like similar to focus. They've mixed us all together. So the LGBTQ, it's the black African Americans. Oh, you're so oppressed. Let's let's help you, let's rescue them, let's jump on their side, let's fight for their cause, let's put our fist in the air, let's stand for justice, right? Because they are on a power trip. Let me explain something to you. To take somebody else's money, 
and be able to direct it over here while I put some in my pocket now. Now, I never did that. I never put it in my pocket, but even just without putting it in your pocket, you feel the sense of power and you feel good like you're doing um, the right thing and you're helping people and you it's it's very narcissistic. It's very self-absorbed. It's very like all about me. It's really not about these groups that they claim that they're helping. But it's, I have to be the rescuer. You have to be the victim because that's my role as the rescuer. And those bad Republicans are the villains. Oh, those bad racists, that bad racist Donald Trump, he's your problem. Look at this thing that Michelle Obama did, that video she did, which was horrible, where she pointed out all the problems were Donald Trump's fault, right? Because I have to be the rescuer, you're the victim, and I have to feel good by making sure I come and rescue you and save the day and point out that bad villain, stay away from them, they're out to hurt you. It's sanctuary. It's the sanctuary model, it's the government system, and they have it set up because they want to take the money. A lot of them is corrupt, so they want to take that money, not just take it from you and give it to the, those in need. They want to take it from you and line their pockets first. It was Obama's administration that increased his salary by 30%, while Donald Trump's administration, Donald Trump has donated his salary every year that he's been in office, 400,000 every year. So you add that up to four years, okay? So anyway, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that, this social justice. I know I've gone long on this video, so I have to come back and do a part two maybe. I don't know. I'll see what you guys think in the comments. Drop down your comments. What do you think about this, what I've explained and laid out here about the social justice warriors, why they're rising up? It's a power trip that they're on to be the rescuer, to be the hero, to shame. A lot of them use... Um, this thing about white supremacy, racism, to shame their counterparts, to guilt their counterparts and make themselves seem like the hero. They want to be the rescuers that rescues these poor, helpless victims of police brutality. These poor, helpless victims. Oh my goodness, let me rescue them. Oh, they need our help. Oh my goodness. Oh, Nancy Pelosi is eating ice cream, but she's like, oh, I need to save you from the bad Donald Trump. And some of you have fell for it, hook, line and sinker. So I just wanted to break that down for you. Having worked on both sides, I've worked as a social worker, I've worked in the social services field, right? For a good chunk of my life. I have a 20 year work history and I was always altruistic, trying to do something to help somebody. I was always looking for who I could rescue. I was that person. So having been on that side, I understand the mindset of what's happening right now. And to put it in a political frame, I never thought I could see it so clearly like I do now. But it's so much stuff I see because I, I lived it and I worked next to, next to, alongside of, and I was those individuals that was always looking for the person, the victim to rescue and help and all those things. So anyway, I have to come back and do another video on this topic. I thank you guys. I'm Epiphany Tom, Tanya. Right, make sure you um, drop down in the comments your thoughts and reaction to this video. What do you say about, what say you about this topic of the social justice warriors? Train Marxists. Um, along with the BLM, side by side, they're rising up. It's the rise. And I'm going to tell you in another video how it could be, it's going to be the fall of them as well. It's going to be their downfall. But anyway, God bless you. Love you guys. I love you. And there's nothing you could do about it. Go be great on purpose. Remember, if you're going through anything, God can turn that thing around for you. Just call on his name. And make sure you go check out the books on Amazon.com. I got t-shirts on Teespring. Udemy has courses. And I have services. So you guys can reach out to me. I have all my information down in the description. God bless you. Peace.